There's a story Grandpa used to tell by the fire about a lady who was engaged to be married to a very rich man. He'd had many wives before, it was said, but they'd all vanished. This caused the lady some concern, but her parents just saw his money and sent her off to be wed, and she being in the sort of predicament she was, resolved to find her own way through it. So she moved into his house on a faraway island away from her family, with her solitary trunk, and looked upon the wide expanse of the huge estate that stood, colossal and empty, except for him and her and their silent, grey-faced servants. The man she married was huge and had a long black beard that devoured most of his face, and beady dark eyes that burned in his wide, dark sockets. No one knew how he'd come upon his fortune, but he had many ships and was often away, and he said he was just as happy to leave her be, that his main interest was in travel, but he needed someone to tend to his home. The grey-faced servants moved her one solitary trunk into her cabinet's bedroom, and he bent before the bed and kissed her small hand, and he kissed her small foot and told her she could have anything she wanted in all the world, if she would simply agree to stay there. You may go into any room in the house that pleases you. You may have anything it is you wish to have, you may build anything in addition to what is my home to make it yours and do whatever you wish with my fortune to please you. You may move what you wish moved and invite whomsoever you wish, and all I ask in return is that you do not use this key. Where does it lead? she asked. That I might avoid this place entirely. This key is the key to my sanctuary. It is all that I love in this world besides travel, and the only way in is through the door at the end of the hall, at the bottom of the west tower. You may do whatsoever else you wish, my wife, but do not connive a way to enter that room. Do not change it. Do not use this key. This is all I ask of you. Promise me this, and you may do what you wish with all I otherwise possess. I do promise, she said. He kissed her small foot and he kissed her small hand and the very next day sailed out into the world, waving goodbye and leaving her all alone in the wide empty house, with only the grey-faced servant silently stepping around her and saying no words. She promptly removed the heavy rusted iron key from the ring and threw it into the ocean. She reviewed her husband's books and accounts and began to neat in the household, paying the servants more and renovating their quarters until they were friendly and bright-eyed and she opened up the extra cavernously echoing chambers of the house to their families, so the hallways around with voices. She balanced her husband's financial empire, sending missives and inquiries to various branches, and by the time he returned from his travels, he looked bewildered that she was still there, and that all she had done, but conceded that she had followed the letter of their agreement. But... What was in the room then, Grandpa? Who cares? If somebody tries to lead you into a trap, don't follow them. And if you promise not to do something, don't do it.